The second strongest sorcerer against the strongest sorcerer in the series, a debate which has divided us all. Yuta and Gojo are both similar in so many ways, having this crazy abundance of power and acquiring techniques which put themselves on this pedestal. For example, Yuta's ability to copy techniques makes this hypothetical matchup even more crazier than you think. With that said, does Yuta stand a chance against Satoru and Gojo? But before we get into the video, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit that notification bell to stay updated on latest uploads. This video will contain spoilers from the manga. We know that this kind of matchup seems impossible with how Jujutsu Kaisen is laid out, but there's no harm in theorizing what could potentially happen in a battle between the two strongest sorcerers in JJK. There are so many techniques and abilities which clash in a way, and it'd be pretty interesting to see how this battle could turn out. So without further ado, let's get straight in. Yuta and Gojo have known each other before the main timeline of Jujutsu Kaisen, with Gojo taking on an extremely nervous Yuta who had just recently caused some trouble in his high school. Jujutsu Kaisen Zero was essentially when Gojo would begin to stir the abilities of a young Yuta, seeing the potential in him and deciding to put Yuta to the test. Gojo saw something in Yuta that no one else did, and with Yuta acquiring such a power which was Rika, Gojo believed it would elevate Yuta to levels unknown thus putting Yuta through many trials and perfecting his ability to control Rika as well as his own physical prowess, undergoing some pretty harsh training with Maki. But this would ultimately lead to the final showdown between Yuta and Tsukuru Geto, in which we were able to witness the vast power that Yuta has. Rika's techniques combined with Yuta's physical abilities showed us all a glimmer of how much more powerful he could become in the future. He let go of the restriction on Rika and outpowered Geto's immense Uzumaki technique. What makes things even more interesting was the odds between between Geto defeating Gojo. However, Geto believed with the power of Rika, he may have been able to shut down the invincible Satoru Gojo. But what method he was going to use on Rika to defeat Gojo is unknown. I guess you could say there was something special about Rika, which may have given Yuta the upper hand against Gojo. The reason I say was, is because of the limitations we notice on this new Rika in the most recent chapters of the manga. Although a fully manifested Rika was out of the picture after she was dispelled, it only took Yuta a matter of three months to regain his status as a special grade sorcerer once again, having this new version of Rika by his side, but it all came down to the talent of Yuta and putting these new limited techniques to his advantage. Gojo made a good call of making Yuta travel throughout Africa under the mentorship of Miguel. This would be the moment when Yuta would find himself in a completely new element. We aren't sure what sort of battles or training Yuta underwent during his time in Africa, but he definitely changed and has become a much more ruthless sorcerer. As for Gojo, he reached the pinnacle of power at such an early age, enough to frighten literal serial killers when he was just a child with just his presence alone. When Gojo had defeated Toji during the Hidden Inventory arc, it was from that point onwards he became the strongest sorcerer of his current generation, respectfully. His abilities and techniques were still unrefined at the time, and fast forward more than 10 years on, he has become invincible. Being able to even put a single scratch on this current day Gojo would be the biggest achievement ever, but this shows the sort of difference between both Yuta and Gojo. Yuta had no choice but to learn how to control his insane power, whereas Gojo was born into greatness and understood that he must continue to strive towards it in order to change the landscape of the world. Let's first understand and assess both of their overall abilities and figure out which of the two would have the upper hand, starting off with Yuta. Although during his earlier years his abilities were premature, the presence of Rika alone was enough to frighten those around him. But of course we'll be learning of his current abilities in the JJK series. This was something I had discussed in my video comparing the likes of Yuta and Hakari, and that was the pure presence of Yuta. When he made his reappearance into the series during Yuji's extermination arc, his presence had this immense pressure, enough to even make a grade 1 sorcerer which was Naoya shake in his boots. Immediately upon noticing Yuta, Naoya who of course prides himself in his abilities, decided to hide behind Yuta and ask for his assistance. Even during this phase when Yuji and Yuta faced off for a short time, Yuji realized the amount of cursed energy Yuta has and it was too much to fathom. Yuta reiterates to Yuji how he indeed does have more cursed energy than Gojo himself, but Gojo's cursed energy is infinite and Yuta's can eventually run out. We also eventually learn the many techniques of Yuta's during his fight against Kurorushi, Ishigori and Takako. We begin to understand the new limitations set on Rika after she had been dispelled since Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, and that is she can store cursed weapons, copy techniques and be an external storage of cursed energy. However this comes with a catch and she can only be used for 5 minutes. But the main technique I'd like us to go over is the game changing copy technique. We realize how effective this technique is when Yuta had come face to face with Takako. 
copying his sky manipulation and even her own technique to which he was able to use it at the same caliber that she did. Yuta also has various techniques which he has copied such as Inumaki's curse words and the rose shikigamis but if we strip Yuta of his curse techniques he's still a terrifying monster even without Rika. The amount of curse energy he has is insane. We saw firsthand how great his speed and agility was when battling Takago and Ishigori and even his endurance is of great strength. Being able to withstand attacks such as Ishigori's granite blast and somehow stay standing whilst also planning his next moves. Not only that but we now know that Yuta does indeed have a domain expansion which will be the biggest factor towards this hypothetical matchup with Gojo since we all know how effective acquiring a domain expansion is. From what we saw during his fight against Takako, Ishigori and Kurorushi was when he had opened his domain, we noticed Rika was sitting on the outside of it, meaning he doesn't need Rika at all for it. But we have no clue what his domain expansion is or how it functions. But the most important part is the fact that he has one. We don't know the extent of his domain, but if you look at the likes of Hakari, his domain expansion literally made him immortal. Now if Yuta's domain has something which could fall to Gojo, then Yuta could have a slight chance. But before we come up with this imaginary battle, let's also understand the insane overall abilities of Satoru Gojo. With Gojo even from an early age, he was blessed with limitless technique and the six eyes. The first thing we need to get out of the way is Gojo's infinity. This practically makes him untouchable. Gojo describes it as Achilles never being able to catch the tortoise. It's this constant idea of always chasing what's ahead of you but never being able to catch up and that's the best way to describe Gojo's infinity. With Gojo being able to manipulate the space around him, only he can decide what can or cannot touch him, thus making him untouchable. Now moving on to Gojo's blue, red and purple techniques. It's pretty simple if you break it down like this. Gojo's blue technique allows him to suck things into a vacuum at an immense speed causing some serious damage. His red technique is basically a blast and is the opposite opposite of his blue technique. Now as for his purple technique, this is a combination of both his blue and red, which grants him the ability to literally delete stuff out of his sight. Like how we saw against Hanami, the entire ground and its matter became non-existent after the attack. As for Gojo's six eyes, it's a very unfair advantage. He is able to see curse energy in his purest form and can even see the world at a very different angle. In terms of mass and speed, his six eyes as stated by Yuta plays a fundamental role towards himself being able to infinitely use curse energy no matter the situation, truly making him the strongest. To top things off, we've got Gojo's domain expansion also known as Unlimited Void, a unique domain which feeds the opponent infinite information causing them to be paralyzed by the mere info. It's a cheat code. With that said, both Gojo and Yuta are the rare few who can utilize reverse curse technique at will, which will make things even more difficult into figuring out how this battle could turn out. So let's say that they do get into a battle, does Yuta Akatsu stand a chance against the strongest sorcerer of this generation? Well of course he does. The most obvious answer to this is that Yuta wouldn't be able to beat Gojo, but he would put in one hell of a battle against him. The fact that Yuta acquires the copy technique gives him that bit of hope to stand his ground against Satoru Gojo. But we have to understand that as powerful as Yuta is, he does have his weakness and that is purely based on the fact that he can run out of cursed energy. Cursed energy is essential in the world of JJK and coming up against someone who doesn't run out of it puts you at such a disadvantage. But how could this fight go and how would Yuta be able to even scratch Gojo? Well that all comes down to Yuta learning how to use domain amplification. We saw in chapter 84 how both Jogo and Hanami were capable of using it since it can disable the opponent's curse technique or weaken it. And in this case it was Gojo's infinity but this also means that Jogo and Hanami wouldn't be able to use their curse techniques also. So if you take that into mind, if Yuta were to use domain amplification on Gojo then it would disable or weaken his infinity. But Gojo still has his limitless techniques to choose from. At the end of the day it all depends on the situation. But knowing Yuta even through the smallest of cracks, he would strike without hesitation. As for Yuta's copy technique technique in a battle against Gojo, he can literally copy Gojo's limitless techniques and dish them back out to him if you wanted to. But with Gojo already understanding this, I don't even think Gojo would use the limitless techniques on Yuta in order to avoid that headache. This battle in itself would all come down to how confident Gojo is just by using his physical prowess, six eyes and domain expansion, since he can run down the clock on Yuta's cursed energy, just like how we saw towards the end of Yuta's battle against Ishigori. We also have to understand that Yuta can only use techniques he copied for a maximum of 5 minutes, meaning Yuta would need to go all out upon using Rika. Once the 5 minutes of chaos are over and Yuta looks to be worn down, that would be the perfect perfect opportunity for Gojo to simply use a domain expansion and subdue Yuta. Although Yuta does have an array of amazing abilities, what pulls him back are the limitations on him. Since dispelling Rika, he's had to perfect how to use that limited 5 minutes. 
If it were the Yuta of today with the ability of Rika from before, then Yuta would have a much better chance of actually taking down and killing Satoru Gojo. But this video was to explain if Yuta had a chance on taking on Gojo, and he definitely does. But Gojo's techniques and immense power outweigh Yuta's massively. But from what we've uncovered so far, Gojo would eventually win this battle. It's common sense, but like I just mentioned, if this were Rika from Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, being paired up with Yuta from today, then my money is on Yuta all day, every day. Anyways, we've come to the end and it's pretty safe to say that Yuta does indeed stand a chance against Gojo, but if these two were to come up in a hypothetical battle, how would you guys see it out? Be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. As always, like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're new and I'll see you guys in the next one.